Do you ever feel stuck in anger, anxiety, numbness, or despair, even though nothing dangerous is currently happening? Well, this is your nervous system caught in survival mode. Today, I'm going to break down why you get stuck in fight, flight, or freeze, and more importantly, how you can break free from this dysregulation to feel calm, safe, and alive. Polyvagal theory, created by Dr. Porges, is the science of safety and connection in your nervous system. When I'm working with clients with trauma, chronic pain, chronic symptoms, uh, chronic dysregulation like anxiety, I'm often using a polyvagal lens because I think it's really essential for helping people understand their nervous system, their body, and learn to take cues off of it and learn to move through dysregulation. It can lead to even deeper work, like deeper emotional work or trauma work. Now, I'm going to break down uh, our understanding of the nervous system and polyvagal theory in this video. I'm also going to explain what factors can dysregulate your nervous system and what we can do to start to shift this. Now, before I explain this, I think it's really important to talk about a concept. Now, most of us know what perception is. We perceive things consciously and we're perceiving things internally in our body like sensations and we're perceiving things externally like our environment or relationships that we're in. Now, most of us don't think about it this way, but you're making perceptions if internal or external signals are safe or dangerous. So let's imagine you met me in person. I know this is a video, but say you met me in person. You'd be making perceptions. Is Tanner a nice person? Is he a mean person? Is he safe? Is he dangerous? And so you're making these conscious perceptions. But here's the thing is your nervous system does this first. And this is a concept called neuroception. Now, neuroception has been happening in every moment of your entire life, even before you had conscious memory. So you think about it, it's kind of like an antenna. And your nervous system is scanning without your awareness. And it's scanning internally or externally for signals of safety or danger. So for example, say you were standing on the sidewalk about to cross the road and you step off the sidewalk and you hear a car honk and quickly you get this burst of fight or flight energy and you step back, get off the road. That's your neuroception taking place even before you had conscious perception. Now, when neuroception is working accurately, it's great because you get the right amount of energy to face the challenges in your day, and then you can move back up to a safe and connected state. Now, the hard part is, is that a lot of us, if you face trauma, childhood adversity, toxic stress, or chronic pain and symptoms, your neuroception isn't working accurately. It's working inaccurately. And so let's imagine same scenario. And for this example, let's imagine that unfortunately this person has faced a very overwhelming car accident in the past, which is really common in our society. I, I feel for anyone who's gone through that because I know that can be really difficult. But they've had an overwhelming car accident in the past. And now in this scenario, when they step off the sidewalk and they hear that car honk, they get a wild, intense burst of fight or flight energy way more than needed. And so that's the idea, is that when neuroception starts to become inaccurate, the danger signals internally or externally that your nervous system is picking up are hyper amplified. And then it starts to miss, you know, safety signals. So if you're in a relationship and there's lots of signals of safety, but you face trauma in relationships in the past, you're gonna miss those safety signals and your nervous system is going to start to look for danger signals. You think about why this happens. Your nervous system is trying to protect you. And so your nervous system, based on past events and what it's faced, such as trauma and relationships, now it's trying to protect you in an overprotective way in every relationship that you're in. 
And this can really become an issue because it can make us chronically dysregulated. Now, when I say chronic dysregulation, I'm talking about fight. So this could be irritated, frustrated, angry, flight. This is more like nervous, anxious, panic, or freeze and shut down. And freeze and shut down, really common uh, state to go into when we're dysregulated and when we face trauma. And this can look like numbness, despair, hopeless, helpless, disconnected, at the extreme end, dissociative. And so when neuroception is off, we're constantly going into one of these survival states, fight, flight, freeze, shutdown. And we're not very often going into a safe and connected state where we feel at ease, light, calm, um, you know, playful or socially connected. We just don't have easy access to a safe and connected state. And so this is why people get stuck in fight, flight, or freeze. Now, I want to go through a list of factors that keep us chronically dysregulated. So keep us in a chronic state of fight, flight, freeze, or shutdown. And as I go through this list, just see how, what ones you relate to, because this tells us the work that we need to do to exit, fight, flight, and freeze. Trauma and childhood adversity are some of the most common reasons that I see people getting locked into dysregulated states. But this can also look like chronic stress or burnout, often involved with our work or home tasks just becoming too extreme. Social isolation is a factor I really want people to think about because your nervous system was meant to connect. And if you're constantly isolated in your life, your nervous system is going to constantly feel in danger mode. Perfectionism. I'm a recovery perfectionist, so I feel for anyone who's struggling with this coping mechanism. Chronic pain and illness. Really normal. If you've had debilitating, long-lasting chronic pain, chronic illness, your nervous system naturally goes into these dysregulated states. Suppressing difficult emotions or dysregulation. We and we understand regulating the nervous system, people try to almost force calmness or safety. But one way that we naturally regulate is by attending to difficult emotions, dysregulation inside, and learning to release it and move through it. You'll actually be more often in a safe, connected, calm state if you drop in and get exposure to difficult emotions and dysregulation. And this is a big factor that I talk about with my clients uh, in therapy. Poor sleep, lack of exercise, and poor diet. These are lifestyle things that you want to be really clear on. I've seen this go wrong where if people don't focus some of their time here and they're doing all the trauma work and everything else, you know, it's important to understand like, okay, what are the lifestyle factors that I need to start to shift to provide my nervous system what it needs to actually feel regulated? Premature birth. You know, myself, I was premature um, and they were hard times, but both my kids were premature. They're doing very well now. But we understand this. When you have premature birth, you're more likely to develop anxiety, depression in the future. Why does this take place? So there's a lot we don't understand about this. But when someone's very premature, like both my kids were born at around 29, 30 weeks, the nervous system, their nervous system wasn't fully developed yet. And so we know that there can be trauma from this birthing process when things go wrong. Dangerous and oppressive social factors, definitely something to consider. Do you feel safe in your community? Do you feel safe in wider society? I know there's so much going on in our world that can make us feel unsafe and some of it we can't change but at least understanding what are these dangerous or oppressive social factors that are affecting you and then doing some of that work in therapy um, to kind of process that. So these are the factors that can keep your nervous system dysregulated long-term. Now, the next question is, how do I heal? How do I regulate my nervous system? Well, let's go through different activities and strategies that you can start to implement. So processing trauma. I don't say this lightly, trauma work can be really difficult, I know it can be scary, but I've seen so many people 
uh, do the courageous work of processing childhood adversity or trauma and get amazing changes in terms of feeling more regulated or having their pain and symptoms reduce. Now, my therapy practice, Pain Psychotherapy Canada, um, can support you with this if you're located within Canada. We also have our digital course with a lot of trauma work that people can start to do on their own. I'll put both links down below. Make lifestyle changes. This is vital. Think about work. Think about how much rest you're getting. Think about the balance you have in your life. So I talk about with people, are, is your energy too high intensity or low intensity? High intensity is like pushing, achieving, uh, trying to succeed, being in fight or flight perpetually. Some people have low energy where they have no connection, no, um, no movement, no connection with nature. So these are the two extremes and we need to become more balanced in how we're living life. Now, this could include building social connection. I think this is really vital. You can't heal alone. You need to find a way to connect socially. If you maybe are bed bound with chronic pain and symptoms, I truly, I feel for you. I've been there, but start to call a friend, start to make some phone calls if that's all you can do, or go to a coffee shop with a friend once a week, starting to build social connection, send signals of safety to your nervous system. Now I have lots of safety signal practices. Um, I have a whole free meditation on safety signals. These are internal safety signals such as breath work, somatic movement, visualization that can help give your nervous system a little boost to safety. So I'll put that link down below for the safety signal practice. Reducing perfectionism and people pleasing. This ties into lifestyle changes, but I thought I'd name it. Perfectionism and people pleasing when they are used on an extreme end will keep you perpetually dysregulated. So starting to reduce some of their, your perfectionistic or people-pleasing behavior can go a long way. Brain retraining practices for chronic pain and illness. I have a ton of these on the channel. They help you feel more regulated when you're experiencing pain or physical symptoms. This is gonna help your nervous system overall feel more regulated long-term, but it also can help eliminate or reduce your chronic pain and symptoms. I'll put a free brain retraining practice down below you can check out. Feel and release difficult emotions or dysregulation. As I discussed, the more you resist feeling difficult emotions or dysregulation, the more dysregulated you will get. So the solution is we need to start to drop in and feel and release these difficult sensations. I have a free emotion practice I'll put down below as well that you can check out on your own. Gentle movement. Movement is medicine. Our nervous system needs movement to feel regulated. Now I know many people watching the channel are bed bound. Uh, they have a lack of movement. Movement feels really scary because they have chronic pain or symptoms. So just start small. Two to three minute walk at first. It can go a long way over time and you can just titrate it, increase the movement day by day a little bit more. Better sleep and nutrition can be really vital in terms of a lifestyle change and address social or environmental dangers. Again, some of these bigger societal things we're not gonna be able to change, but we can start to do some of that trauma work around it. But if there's smaller social changes such as you know, making new friendships, letting go of toxic ones, that can make a big difference in you feeling regulated long-term. So I want to give you a healing challenge. I want you to pick one small strategy or task off the list I just went through to start to consistently do each day for the rest of the week. Again, nervous system regulation doesn't happen in one big safety um, epic moments. It's these small consistent steps, these small signals of safety that you're providing your nervous system week by week, month by month. Nervous system regulation is possible, but we just need to be consistent long term. So pick one small strategy or task off that list and make that the goal for the remainder of the week. So I hope this video was helpful. Please put your questions or comments down below and I'll talk to you all soon. Take care.